want to come with you? Hey, everybody. This is John, and welcome back for this very special Sherm 19 edition of the HR Social Hour Half Hour Podcast. I had the great fortune of being able to spend some time with Val Grubb to talk to her about some of the sessions that she's going to have during the conference in Las Vegas. Val has four different sessions scheduled. On Saturday, June 22nd from 1 to 5 p.m., Leadership Skills for the Senior HR Professional, Mastering the Art of Negotiation. On Sunday, June 23rd from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m., Preparing to Lead, Critical Project Management Skills for the HR Professional. On Monday, the 24th, from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m., a mega session, Elevate Your Game, Moving from Tactical Thinker to Strategic Leader. And finally, on Tuesday at the Smart Stage at 12.20 p.m., Grow Your Brand to Grow Your Career. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll see you soon. Take care. Val, I really appreciate you joining me for the podcast today. And for the listeners that aren't familiar with you or your background, can you talk to us a little bit about your background in human resources and what you do now with Val Grubb and Associates? Yeah, absolutely, John. I'm excited to to join you today. I actually hit the 10-year mark for founding my company in September of last year. Prior to Val Grubb and Associates, I was in corporate America for, gosh, 20 plus years, managing the HR functions along with other back office functions such as, you know, sourcing, facilities, that kind of thing. And, you know, in 2008 is when I founded my company, Val Grubb and Associates, and we specialize in leadership and management training and also senior level coaching services, all designed to make better leaders within companies. I think we need a lot more better leaders, right? (laughs) (laughs) That's the understatement of the year, I think. (laughs) (laughs) One of the things that we talk a lot about on the HR Social Hour is our backgrounds. And we talk about people that fell into HR like me or walk in, as one of my friends likes to put it, you know, coming from different backgrounds and educational experience. So you come to HR from an engineering background, which I find really interesting personally, come from an education background, didn't necessarily plan to do this. For a career. How do you feel like engineering prepared you for what you do now? I actually get that question a lot. And it may seem a stretch to start my career in engineering at an aircraft engine manufacturer. But even then, I had a strong interest in the human side of companies. At Rolls-Royce, I spearheaded our engineering co-op and intern programs for many years. And while I was there, it's really the first time that I recognized to think about you know, this was our major source of new employees coming into the company. And so it was really important to think about the number of female engineers, diverse engineers joining and staying with the company following graduation from their respective schools and then from this co-op and engineering program. And, you know, so I really was kind of, even though I was my majority of functions was was in an engineering environment, I always had that, you know, that, that interest in, in the human side of companies. And I really, you know, I did engineering for gosh, 10, 11 years. And really when I, after I made that switch and went into film and entertainment, that's when I really took on and embraced the HR side of things because to me it was so powerful. I mean, look, you can have the greatest product in the entire planet, but somebody's got to make it. Somebody's got to sell it. Somebody's got to represent what it is that you do. And and that's really, to me, the power of HR. And I just felt like that was really my calling. And engineering gave me, you know, gave me some really hardcore structure. I mean, it's in tackling problems, in thinking about long-term solutions, in, you know, doing things like moving from tactical to strategic, how you can flow seamlessly back and forth. So engineering gave me a lot of very strong technical skills that, gosh, are still, I, I still apply today. It, it's been actually, like I said, a very solid education to help with that. And then, you know, I went back and got my MBA and have certainly done some classes with SHRM and other programs to help shore up the HR side of things. Talk a little bit more about current state and particularly with your own organization. You know, what do you find the biggest issues that your clients are dealing with from an HR perspective? And I guess to that end, are those 
issues consistent amongst everybody you deal with or are they more client specific? Oh my goodness. What 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 don't we see on a regular basis in <laughs> HR? <laughs> Uh, you know, I guess from my perspective, I think the two biggest issues that I'm hearing a lot about are in working with my clients on, and it is pretty consistent, I got to admit, is diversity and, and really what that means and how to actually make diversity work. And surprisingly, the second issue is still integrating millennials. And I say that's interesting because millennials have been in our midst for, what, 12, 14 years, and yet companies are still struggling. With my clients, I have a tendency to say it's not getting any better because we have Gen Z now entering the workforce. And they are, guess what? They're projected to be even bigger group of employees than the millennials. I always say to my clients that if you're still struggling on how to motivate, engage, retain younger workers, it's really time to get on the stick. On the diversity front, gosh, there's been study after study, John, that shows that companies with more women and diversity in leadership positions produces greater financial results for companies. Yet employers are really struggling with how to attract and how to retain women and diverse employees, which then speaks to the bottom line. And so I would say that those are two very consistent problems that that, that all of my clients share. Majority of my clients reach out to discuss. And you know, it's not industry specific, I would say, which which I find to be interesting because you think you would think that you know, maybe something in film and entertainment, maybe that would be, uh, you know, maybe maybe they would be, they would know how to get this all figured out. And that's just not the case because you've got, you know, your boomers, your Gen X in management leadership positions, and yet they're still struggling with when the majority of their workforce are younger millennials and or Gen Z. So it really is an interesting phenomenon. I think there was this thought that millennials would sort of more adapt to Gen X and boomers. And it's just not really been that case. And I think they're really still shaking up um, the workforce. And many companies, many, many companies, many industries are really, really still struggling with that. And the diversity, I think it's really come to the forefront uh, with what was it, the Me Too movement a couple years ago, that it's really, but, but again, just much more statistics that show that you know, that your company is going to do better financially. Like there's a financial reason to think about uh, the makeup of your leadership and the makeup of your of your organizations. Let's talk a little bit about SHRM 19 in particular. So you're leading, you have two sessions that you're going to <laughs> lead, a mega session and a smart stage presentation. Wow. So <laughs> really, you know, without, without giving everything away, can you tell us a little about each of those and then For me, can you tell me how in the world do you find time to prepare for all of that? (laughs) (laughs) Well, my two pre-conference sessions are one is on the art of negotiation and the second, and that is Saturday afternoon. And then Sunday morning, I teach a pre-conference workshop on project management for the HR executive. My mega session on Monday afternoon is really a hot one. And I would suggest that you definitely get there early. It's on elevating your game from tactical thinker to strategic leader. And finally, my Tuesday morning smart stage session is on the brand of you. With all of my sessions, you'll walk away with very specific tools that you can immediately implement to better, to, to better yourself at each of these hard skills. Now, on finding the time, I have to admit, I use the skills I teach in my project management class on how to fit it all in. So come on and join me Sunday. Uh, come come join me at one of my pre-conference workshops, and I'll, I'll share with you on how I can do that. <laughs> hey, I, I can't ask for any plug. better. I, why not? <laughs> that's why we're talking, Val. It's hey, that, there's no shameless plugs. That's that's why. Because <laughs> again, I look at the schedule and I go, "Holy cow!" I know how much time I prepare to do what I do, and it's not even close to this. So I had to ask. I just had to ask. I, I'm very uh, honored that uh, I'm very honored that Sherm. This is my I think my third year in a row that I've had four sessions. So oh. again, it's it's really an honor. Uh, to have the opportunity to speak. Well, having said that, you and I can agree that the Sherm Annual Conference can be very overwhelming. You know, the the size, the schedule, 
everything going on, it's a whole different beast from most conferences, most events that people would attend. What advice would you give a first time attendee on how to prepare accordingly for a Sherm Annual event? Yeah, well, I I look at that from a three-pronged approach. So first is just flat logistics. Uh, And I know you hear this from other folks, but I cannot stress enough how to wear tennis shoes. These conference centers are massive. And I have foolishly worn cute, fabulous shoes versus practical shoes and almost crippled myself. So I got to just say, this is not about fashion. This is about comfort for eight, 10 hours a day, because these sessions start at seven and go till six at night. I also suggest to bring a sweater. It's typically like sub-zero in these conference rooms. Um, Now, from a training aspect and just, you know, again, you, you said it, there's hundreds of sessions to choose from. I always suggest to figure out what skills you need to improve in your day to day. Chances are Sherm has multiple options that can help improve in your day-to-day. So I kind of always start with the basics that are going to help me right now and figure out what I need to learn. And then I can go in and find those sessions and and fill in my schedule accordingly. And if you've not downloaded Sherm's app, I strongly suggest it because it actually lets you build it out, build out your schedule right right in this app that you can look at. So once you find these basics, then I suggest let's step back and dream a bit. What are the skills that are next level up? Fill in with those workshops so that you're not only pushing yourself to get better in your day to day, but you're also letting yourself dream and be ready for what's next in your career. So I always suggest, you know, you want to make sure to get the basics covered, but then let's dream a little bit and push yourself for that next shot. And then finally, I say use the exhibitor hall as an opportunity to improve on those services that you either hire out or tools that you use internally. I find the exhibition space can really be overwhelming, but I recommend taking inventory before you go in on what you need and what you want to see. That way you can target your needs and not get lost with all the bright, shiny gadgets and things that are offered there. (laughs) Um, I, 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 I just find the exhibition hall to be so overwhelming because I want it all. I mean, I, I just, oh my God, I, I need this. Oh, I want that. I need that. I want to talk to them. So it's, I find the exhibition, like I can get lost for hours in there. And I think really to get the most, you want to walk in knowing some services and, and you know, really identifying those companies you want to speak with because they offer the services that you need. Then go around and because, you know, your tongue's going to be hanging out just just in, in envy of wanting all these services. What do you think is going to be the hot giveaway this year? Oh, my God. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. Career Builders always got fabulous stuff. I wait hours in line. I got I still have. My bright orange uh, Converse sneaks, like love them, love them. They always have something like that's the first place. That's the beeline I go to first as career builder to see what those rascals have. <laughs> I, <laughs> and let me tell you, you just prepare yourself to wait in line for that. And it yeah. will be well. <laughs> we, 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 I was talking to some of the other day and we were talking about, you know, that when hula hoops were in fashion a few years ago and how they're not hula hoops like you and I had as kids, they fold down huh. into nothing. And. 2019, we'll have to figure out what the what that's the year of in terms of giveaways. <laughs> oh, and I'm all in. I'm all in. I, I make it my mission. I make it my mission. <laughs> well, as I mentioned to you. Now I knew who my competition is, John. I'm watching, I'm watching you. <laughs> I, I, I've gotten better about not trying to pick up everything because you have to get it all home, and that's really hard. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm... I, you got to tell me your secret on that one, John. I still I'm after everything. I'm the woman dragging five bags behind me. <laughs> well, as we talked briefly about before we started recording, you know, I, I am not ashamed to admit that this is my first time in Las Vegas. It's just never been on my radar, and and just conference wise, this will be my first time. And and I'm sure a lot of the listeners and people that that are picking this up as well, that are first-time attendees there. What recommendations do you have as far as restaurant shows, places to, to see, things to do while I'm in town there? 
You know, Vegas is a great place. I, I, Vegas is the first, the, my first Sherm National that I spoke at was in 2005 and it was in Vegas. So I got to admit, Vegas has a, has a special place for me. But I got to admit, with four sessions, I do more pool time and relaxation than getting out. I am a huge Cirque du Soleil fan and Vegas has like six or seven Cirque shows. So I always reward myself by going to see one of those shows while I'm in town. Again, I love all that twisty, turny stuff. It makes me want to like run to the gym right then. And, you know, a great tour, if you can get into, is Zappos. So Zappos headquarters is just outside of Vegas, or I think actually it's in Vegas, but it feels just right outside of the main strip. And they offer tours, and it's well worth taking a peek through there just to talk with somebody about their about their HR processes. I found it to be one of the most worthwhile things I've done. Very difficult to get in to get tours. So look at that. You got to book that now. And I, you know, I, there's just so many amazing, well-known chefs who have restaurants in Vegas too. And that's the great thing is like any, you know, you know, you like Emerald, there's like five restaurants that are with Emerald. So a lot of different options based on um, the, the restaurants there are some of the best in the world. And this from a woman who's, who lives in New Orleans. So I know good food. Um, right. And I recommend really that you make those resis early with 18,000 of your HR colleagues there. Getting a table really takes some planning. I just find, you know, being out on those conference shows all day, if you really start at 7 a.m. there till 6, I hang poolside. <laughs> as pathetic as that sounds, but I have a tendency to be exhausted at the end of the day. So you know what? Don't don't fret if you just want to come home as well and prop your feet up if you're first timer. I don't think wiser words could be said. I think you got to make it Ugh. work for you. I totally get it. I totally get it. Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah, I like I said. I I mean, when you're really there and taking notes and really into it, and then your next session is you know a quarter of a mile away or a mile away. And I think it's one thing I'll be interested to hear, John, Vegas to me is unlike any place else. Like the hotels are miles and miles and miles apart because they're so big. You're only going to walk, try to walk from one hotel to the to the next once and you'll never do it again. Sure. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, I really look forward to your thoughts on Vegas when you're done. We will definitely trade notes on that. I have no happy to do that. Happy to do that. Well, you know, unfortunately, I, there are going to be people that are listening that aren't able to attend Sherm 19, but wanted to get to know you a little better and kind of hear about what you have going on. For those that aren't able to attend and want to connect with you, Val, what's the best way for them to reach you out there? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can sign up um, um, for my blog at my website, Val Grubb and Associates, the nest.com. So Val Grubb and Associates.com. I publish a monthly blog post on increasing various leadership and management skills. I'm also on Twitter at, at Val Grubb. I have a Facebook business page. And I'm also on Instagram at, at, at Val Grubb Speaker. Look at, on my website is my email address or it's vgrubb at valgrubbenassociates.com. So would be delighted to hear from anybody. Val, I really appreciate the time. I definitely look forward to seeing you in Vegas, trading some notes about the city and what we do and look forward to seeing you then. I can't wait to see you then, John. All right. Take care. Thanks. 